Hey guys, Mike Builds here. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I installed this mini split into my house without putting a hole in my wall. I simply put it through my window. This is what the final install actually looks like and I've been using this for a few months now and it's been working great. I put all the details in this video on how to do it. I show you how to wire it, how to plumb it, how to vacuum it down. It is a little bit of a longer video and I do apologize in some of the shots, my inverter fans are kind of going crazy. It's a little bit hard to hear me, but just bear with me. If you watch the entire video, you will have all the information you need in order to install your own mini split. It is kind of a long video. So if you guys end up watching the whole thing, thank you guys very much. Anyways, enjoy the video. What up guys, welcome back to another video. I'm very excited to show y'all what I have in this box. In a previous video, we installed the Almo mini split. We installed a Mr. Cool mini split and I also installed a mini split in the garage. But I went ahead and scooped another one because I wanna have two in the living room. I recently just upgraded my solar setup and I think I have more than enough power to be able to run one and two's better than one. So in this box, we have another brand of Amazon mini split that I wanna show you guys. So in this video, we're gonna unbox it, set the whole thing up and I'm gonna show you how to install it without putting a hole in your wall. I'm gonna show you how to wire it. I'm gonna show you how to vacuum it down and connect your gauges to it and get the whole thing running because this is not a DIY kit. This is one of those that you have to buy, hire an HVAC guy to do, but I'm going to show you how to do everything on your own. And I'm also going to install this without putting a hole in my wall. And the reason I like mini splits so much is because of how efficient they are, especially if you're going to run them on solar. So you can see, this is a Cooper and Hunter model. These seem to have pretty good reviews. The biggest thing I wanted out of the mini split that I'm gonna put in the corner is Wi-Fi communication with my phone. That way I can be able to remotely change the temperature because the other one, the Elmo system, is not a smart system like that. Okay, here we go. We got it out of the big box. We have the air handler indoor unit right here. We have the condenser unit right here. And then this is the accessory kit. So this is gonna have all your tubing and everything, but we're gonna open everything up and lay it all out and I'll show you all everything it comes with. So this is supposed to be a Seer 25, which is better than all the other mini splits I have, which means it's supposed to be very efficient. I mean, they're already pretty efficient, but the higher the Seer number, generally the better energy performance you're gonna get out of it. And this is 9,000 BTUs at 115 volts. Oh, this thing's dirty. That's okay. Yoink. Oh yeah, look at that. Like I was saying before, it's 25 sear. For the money, I think this is the best efficiency I was able to find. This unit shipped to my door was about $700, $699 I believe. All right, so here's the outdoor unit. So I'm gonna get all this trash cleaned up and lay everything out for you guys and we'll go over everything one by one. All right guys, here's a close up of the condenser. And honestly, this looks like a carbon copy of my Mr. Cool unit. Pretty good. The back looks like all the fins look good, no bent spots. The specs, if anyone's curious. So what's interesting is this is a 9,000 BTU unit, but the condenser looks like a 12,000 size. And I'll show you guys when I get this thing outside, I'll put it next to the Mr. Cool unit I have because the Mr. Cool unit I have is a 12K BTU unit, and this is only 9,000. Got a big condenser, so maybe that has to do with the efficiency or something, I'm not sure. Here is the inside unit. I just went ahead and popped the cover off. We'll fold that up. There's your filters you can clean. And this looks exactly like the Mr. Cool indoor unit as well. I actually was just cleaning that today and it looks literally like a carbon copy, which makes sense because there's only so many manufacturers of these little mini splits. So if you're kind of on the edge about which one to get, if you buy anything that's not like a big, big name brand, you're probably gonna get only, a, you know, maybe a few manufacturers that actually make these or legs. That's what I was told. So I was originally gonna do a Mr. Cool DIY setup because Lowe's had them in stock, but they wanted about $1,700 before tax. And this was less than half of that. So I was like, you know what? I'd rather do my own and I had a lot of people ask me on the last mini split video they want more detail on how to wire it and they want more detail on how to evacuate the system so I'm going to show you guys all that in this video here's all the stuff you get with it you get your manuals get your remote some screws to mount the indoor unit looks like some extra fittings if you want to shorten your hoses or something and then here's your line kit so you have your line right here what's interesting about this is this line looks massive I don't remember these being that big on the other one but the small side looks normal you get a drain hose extension you get your wiring you get the little sleeve that I never use that you put through the wall. You get some tape and then this nasty goo stuff. I never use any of that, but I do use the wire obviously and the drain hose. So that's nice to have. So yeah, that's everything you get in the box with this specific unit. And my goal is to mount it somewhere over here and I'm actually gonna mount it away from the wall. So I'm gonna build a small standoff and mount it away. And the reason why, and like I was alluding to before is we're not we're gonna drill a hole in the wall. I'm actually gonna run the tubes through the window. And a lot of you may think that's crazy and you might think, well, why would you wanna do that? Well, I believe there's a lot of people out there who wanna have the benefits of a mini slit, but don't wanna put a hole in their wall. So I'm gonna show you how to do it without doing that. And the other reason too is I'm already having to build a pass-through because of these wires right here for my solar charging setup. This powers my other two mini splits and there's solar running into this and all that good stuff. So I'm already going to have a hole going through the window. I'm actually building a template with watertight connections. I'm just going to add another one in order to run the mini split lines through it. So I figured screw it. I'll try to just install the mini split and not have to drill a hole in the wall because I don't like doing that. 
All right, so we got our materials. Sorry, it's a little bit windy. I'm gonna speak more into the mic. We have all of our materials in order to build the condenser mount. So with these mini splits right here, I kind of just threw them on the deck. I didn't even screw them down to be completely honest. And this works fine. I've never had any issues with it, but if I'm gonna mount a third one. I don't wanna take up any more deck space. So I think I'm gonna make a custom built off the ground mount and I'm gonna use a wall mount to basically mount it to two four by fours I'm gonna submit in the grounds. So I'm gonna take you guys out to the garage side of the house where I did the garage unit and I'll show you how I did that because that one turned out really good. And I think if we can just copy that design, it'll look really good and it'll just take up a little bit of space right here. It'll be off the ground. I can weed whack around it and it won't get a lot of dirt or crap sucking into it. So let me go show you guys the other mount just so y'all can get an idea of what I'm talking about. All right, so here's the unit I have to cool and heat my garage. And as y'all can see, it looks really good. I should have trimmed this down, but we're definitely gonna do it on the other unit, trim the feet down a little bit. And other than that, this thing looks really nice i also did put a disconnect switch you can kind of see how we did it and i painted it with oil-based paint that way the wood hopefully holds up it is pressure treated four by fours anyways this has been up for about a year now and it's been pretty solid it hasn't moved and i think it looks really good too compared to just throwing them on a deck this is the idea so we're gonna go ahead and start trying to build this and see what we can do all right so i went ahead and measured between the two mounting feet on the ac unit the condenser unit that way we know how wide to make the stand and it's right at about 20 and a half inches on center on both of those. So now we're gonna go outside, put the stand together, and then I'm gonna mock up how wide it all has to be based on this measurement. That way I know it's... All right, as far as the wall mount bracket goes, I normally just buy the cheapest one on Amazon. I think this was 40 bucks. I mean, they all kind of look the same. There's a few that are a little bit more fancier, but... Normally the cheap ones are fine. Some of you guys are thinking, but Michael just mounted to the side of the house. Well, I don't wanna put holes in the side of the house. That's kind of what I'm trying to avoid here. You want to slot it in like that. All right, so now I'm gonna measure like we did inside and get the 29 and a half inches across, and then we're gonna get it put right there, spread the four by fours apart, screw everything together, and should be pretty much assembled. All right, so I'm gonna have to drill another hole here because this isn't quite lined up where I want it. No problem. Okay, unfortunately this is hitting, so I'm gonna take this bolt back out, put it through this hole. Hopefully it's close enough in the center to where it'll line up still. If Because the feet have to be 20 and a quarter inches apart for the condenser unit to fit on there. I would test fit the condenser unit, but it's very heavy. I'm not going to be able to do that until we get this stood up and somewhat put in the ground. But this is what we're looking at so far. I'm just gonna cut the access of that metal off and it should look really well. Okay, here's our mocked up little stand. Now I have to figure out exactly where I want to put it. And I'm thinking right here because that'll give us enough room right here and also enough room to still get to the hose. And then as far as how far away from the house, probably put probably right about here. And then the unit will stick out from here to about here. And that should be perfect. And then I can still get back here and weed whack and clean and do all that good stuff. So I'm going to kind of get it in the position I want and then mark. And then we're going to start digging the holes. And I'm just going to dig until this is at the proper height that I want it. And I'm thinking I probably want the top of the condenser unit maybe right about here. And I think that'll look okay. I don't want it to block the view of this window. I still want to, be able to use that. Okay, now you guys are gonna watch me dig this entire hole. Just kidding, make y'all sit through that. You are gonna sit through some of them. Look at that, it's already in. One, one hundredth of the way down. Oh, they're excited, they're excited, I see. I just got home, so they're very excited. Come on, Dank. Where's Dank at? There he is. Come on, Dank. All right, guys, so we're back on the AC project. It's actually been a few days, but I did go ahead and get the stand all built, cemented in, so we are good to go there. I also trimmed this little piece off. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the condenser unit on this. I'm gonna set it down. Hopefully I can do it by myself because it's very heavy. And then I'm gonna use these little adjusters right here in order to get it level. So far, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I also did get my little window thing installed. I don't know if I'm gonna do a video on this or not, but you see it here. So this is how I'm running all the wires and hoses into the house. And then this is where the line set and all that stuff's gonna go inside. That way I don't have to drill a hole in the wall. And my thought process about that is if I ever wanna remove this, it's super easy. I just pull all this out and close the window. Anyways, like I said, I'm gonna get the condenser on there, get the feet and all that stuff bolted down and kind of see where we're sitting after that and then from there we just got to plumb the line set hang the inside unit wire it and we should be good to go i'm going to show you guys how to wire this and i'm going to show you guys how to vacuum it down those of you guys who don't know how to do that and i'll show you all my little tips and tricks of how i do it get a leak free connection that will last for years all right here's the feet that i believe the wall mount came with so i'm going to go ahead and throw these on and just kind of have them loose on the mount but basically they're going to sit like this with a nut and a washer at the bottom and then we're going to set the unit on top of these i'm going to set them really loosely because i have no idea how, like where exactly it's going to go and then we're gonna set the unit on get everything lined up and then we'll tighten everything up and kind of like i was saying before in the unboxing this thing looks literally just like this mr cool unit i mean down to 
it's pretty close to dang near identical. But the weird part is this is supposedly 9,000 BTUs, but it's also supposed to be 25 sear. So that may have something to do with it. And here's what a standard 9,000 BTU unit looks like. This looks also the same size as my Dell one that's in the garage. So a little smaller, but kind of interesting. Just something I noticed. Now I'm gonna get this big heavy thing lugged up on this. Oh yeah. All right, now I'm gonna move the feet in the back because they're not lined up as you can see. All right, guys, there you have it. We have her up and mounted and looks pretty good, honestly. I think I did all right. Kind of high off the ground, you know, keep it out of the weeds and whatnot. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the bolts down and hopefully it holds and doesn't fall over one day when I'm at work. Hopefully my cement job works out all right. But yeah, that's it. Like I said, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get this all tightened down and finalized. And then we're probably gonna start running the lines and hooking everything up. All right, we're in the house now. I got my line set there ready. Here's what the inside of that little thing looks like. Anyone's curious. Still has some touching up to do, but it works. I think I'm gonna put the air handler probably right above the window, maybe like an inch, maybe to cover this, and then I can put a curtain. But I'd be okay with that. So I need to pull these curtain rods off, and then I'm gonna build a bracket because the head unit is gonna sit off the wall a little bit because we're not going through the wall. The line set actually is gonna run down. And all I gotta do from there is figure out what I'm gonna do with all the extra line set because there's gonna be quite a bit of extra. I did wanna mount the head somewhere, you know, maybe to use more of the line set, but at the same time, I think that's the best spot for it. I even thought about maybe doing it right here, but then it'd be a pain to clean it because then I'd have to move my solar power station every time I wanna do that. And I think right here would be okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of start mocking that up and then start trying to run the line set. All right guys, pretty simple. Got the indoor unit bracket mounted this is kind of the temporary i guess it's going to become permanent it just looks really bad and i'm a little bit embarrassed to say that it's permanent but i'm going to paint it but just for now just to get the whole system going i put that up there and it does match my door trim so but i'm going to paint it to make it look a lot better i'm sure some of you guys think i'm crazy for doing it like this but we're trying to do it a little bit different and i personally don't mind i don't really care what people think also when you go to mount your indoor unit you should put a little bit of a angle at it so basically the entire head unit cassette's gonna be sagging a little bit more on this side than on this side. And what that's gonna do is facilitate better drainage of the condensate pan. So I do that on all my mini splits and it seems to work great. I don't have any problems with water stagnating in the condensate pans and then causing mold and all that stuff. So I already did that exactly where I want it. Now I'm going to go ahead and hang the indoor unit up there and see how it looks. And there it is guys, hanging up there. I think it actually looks pretty good and it's right underneath the window. So that'll help cool this side of the house off because right now it's very hot on this side of the house and we should have another 9,000 BTUs of solar powered air conditioner. As far as the line set goes, I think I'm gonna come out right here and then go down and try to follow the contour of the wall. I really don't wanna block the window. That's kind of the plan with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the thing to do that. So here, here we have the back of the unit. This, these are your refrigerant lines. Here's your drain tube. I'm gonna go ahead and install the power cable and not let this fall off my couch. This is the power cable right here. So I'm gonna show you how to hook that up real quick. Okay, all you gotta do is flip the lid up of the unit and then remove a little surface cover. And right here you have four conductors. So you just wire them and basically whatever number you make the conductors you just have to match that on the outside unit and then obviously the green is going to be your ground so if you do red as one just make sure you do one red as one on the outside unit as well that way everything works correctly and this is going to feed from that little hole in the bottom so i'm going to feed it through right there there's a little cable hole down right there and pretty simple so i'm going to go ahead and get that through so not more up and like that so there you go i pulled it through through that hole and what i found from doing this a few times now is you wrap these wires together with some tape and it kind of makes feeding it through a little easier so you don't have to struggle as much but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and get those hooked up and i'm gonna get this little tie down right here to hold the wire down and make it look all nice and neat and to give it some strain relief and there it is it's all wired up i actually had to end up cutting these off because the terminal block they put on this did actually wasn't really compatible with these so all i did was i cut them strip them back and then shove them in the terminal block verify they're all tight and making good connections make sure if you're going to do that you make sure you have good connections and if you're unsure get an electrician to do it and then i put my strain relief right there that's it so i'm going to take a picture of this that way i know what order i wired it and we can put the cover back on Okay, so I spent a lot of time really thinking about how to run the refrigeration lines, and this is kind of sort of what I came up with. It's not 100% how I wanted to do it. Doing it this way doesn't give me any extra hose length. Oh, I don't have to sit there and coil a bunch up. And I feel like the more you have inside the house, the better, only because the hoses actually get cold and hot. The only thing you have to be careful for is if it's going to form condensation. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. I'm probably gonna put some more insulation foam around this also to make it look a little bit better. That way the white doesn't stand out as much. And it's coming down through our little exit. And then it just comes out right here. So now I'm going to go ahead and bend the lines how I need to bend them to connect them here. And I'm just going to loosely put them on. That way you can get the hoses bent the way I want them to make them look as good as possible, as clean as possible, and also function the best I can make it function. All right, there's a really short run of line. So that's awesome. And it has an S curve. That way you can still flex a little bit if the unit decides to move for expansion and contraction reasons. So now we're going to go inside, get the head unit hooked up. Once I'm happy with the tubing placement, then we're actually going to apply some sealant to the fittings and torque them. And I'm going to show you how to do all that. Then we have to vacuum the unit down and then wire it. 
and we can turn it on. All right, guys. The line set is pretty much ran, and all I did was kind of loop it around like that, and then we'll go up here, and it goes along the top. I'm gonna build some brackets to hold that, and then it just comes right here, and it's gonna join the train tube as well as the wiring. And that already runs outside, so I am gonna push it against the wall and make it look a lot cleaner. So we're at so far with our window install. So I'm gonna keep cleaning all this up. I have not torqued any of the fittings yet. This is literally just test fitting the pipe. Now I'm gonna start cleaning it up and trying to make it look a little bit better, get all the rest of the wiring ran. All right, so this is the best I got the lines routed right now. I'm gonna go ahead and end up making some brackets, 3D printing some nice brackets over the lines that make them look a lot better. But just for the sake of getting the unit running, I need to go ahead and run the cable outside to the outside unit. We need to run the condensation drain and we also need to connect power to it. That way we can plug it into our solar generator. So my favorite thing to use to power my mini splits is always a 12 gauge extension cord that I end up cutting up. I've started using on all my mini splits, recommending putting a disconnect. You're supposed to do that anyway. So I have this 30 amp disconnect with 20 amp fuse. We're going to install this on the unit, run power to the extension cord to the solar generator. So the power is going to come from the generator, the solar generator to this, and then this to the AC unit itself. That way it's somewhat fused to add a little bit more redundancy for safety. And that way, if I need to service it, I can disconnect it and I know it's completely shut off. That's what we're going to focus on now. I guess the way I'm going to do that is drill another hole. My original idea was to try to run everything through here, but it's already kind of tight with the line set because this is a half inch and quarter inch line set. So I'm probably going to drill another hole either right here or maybe up there. And we're going to run the rest of the cabling through there. That should be more than enough surface area to run all our cable. So that's the plan right now. I'm going to figure out where I want to drill the hole, drill the hole, get the pipe cut, and we're going to start threading everything through. Once I have all that threaded through, we are going to go ahead and torque the line set down on the head unit as well as the outside unit. And we're going to start our vacuum process. All right. So we got our power, our power to the outside unit to feed the inside unit and the drain hose. And I'm just going to leave it like this just for now. And I'm going to end up tidying everything up once I'm sort of done, but just for the purposes of the video, and kind of showing you guys the most important step. I'm just going to leave it like this, show you guys all the important steps that you need to know about installing this, and I'm going to go back later and clean it up. And once it's all cleaned up and I have a final product to show you guys, I will show it off. But that's what we're going to do just for now. I'm just going to shove some foam in there to seal that hole. But right now, we're going to go ahead and torque the fittings on the inside unit and on the outside unit. I'm also going to use a little bit of this stuff. So if you've never used this, it's basically sealant, and you put these on the ends of the flares to help create a little bit better of a seal. It's not 100% required, but it is. I would recommend you do it. It just increases your chances of not having a leak that much more. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the unit, tilt it back, put these on both flares, and then I'm gonna use, where's my croissant wrench? I have a series of croissant wrenches and a 17 here, and I'm gonna use these to torque the fittings. I would highly recommend you torque the fittings correctly. However, I do not have the right sockets, and I'm just gonna go by feel, but I highly, highly recommend if you've never done this, either hire an HVAC guy to do it, or get a torque wrench and do it exactly by the book so you don't have any chances of leaking. We are also going to pressure test the system with some leak detectant, which is this stuff right here. So what I'm gonna do is after we tighten everything, I'm gonna pressurize the system with 300 PSI of argon, and then we're gonna spray the fittings like this and let it sit for 15 minutes. And as long as we don't have any bubbles, in theory, it should be tight, and then we can proceed to the next step which is backing me down the system and we'll kind of go from there so right here on the flare or on this taper part right here and then same for this one that's where you're going to put your sealant at because between this and that flare is where it actually creates the seal so basically what happens is this collar as it tightens down it mushes the copper because it's soft onto that flare fitting to seal it so we're going to put a little bit of sealant just on the flare just to give it a little extra assistance in sealing once i'm done torquing all this i'm going to put this foam over and wrap it up a little bit more to make sure we don't have any exposed copper because exposed copper exposed fitting it will result in condensation you don't want that you don't want drips coming out of this you want everything to be solid and dry and all that good stuff here so keep that in mind Make sure you wrap this all up once you're done tightening these fittings. All right, guys, here comes the most important part of doing your DIY install. So this is going to be the cap you're going to use to vacuum and pressure test the system. So all you gotta do is pop this off. Keep in mind, this does have a Schrader valve inside of it. And I'm gonna show you why that's very important that you know that. In order to connect a line set or anything really to the mini split, you have to buy these little adapters here. And normally they come in a four pack off Amazon. But what I've noticed is they're two different color gaskets. You have this hard white material, and you have this softer green material. Whenever you go to put this on, you have to use the green one. The reason why you have to use the green one over the white one is because the green one is squishy, the white one is solid. So if you try to use this, it's not going to depress the Schrader valve in there. You're not actually gonna end up suctioning down the line set. You're not gonna be doing anything, but you're gonna think you're gonna be doing it. You're gonna think you're pulling a vacuum and then you're gonna release the gas with this full of air and you do not wanna do that. Contaminate the system where the system will work a lot less efficiency because you're gonna have non-condensables, you know, regular air inside your system. Make sure you use the green one. And if you're unsure, test it with your finger and feel if it's squishy or not. And also when you go to screw it on, you know, maybe you can feel or hear any gas come out if you have a vacuum, for example. They also do make a tool that removes the valve core to do all this, but I think this is the easier way to do it. So like I said, just make sure you use the one with the rubber seal 
seal, not a nylon seal, and you should not have any issues. Okay, I have right here, this is a nitrogen regulator and I'm gonna connect it to a tank of argon. It doesn't matter what you use as long as it's an inert gas. And I'm gonna go ahead and connect this to that service port and we're gonna put this thing to about 300 PSI. That way we can do a pressure check and a leak check. Okay, so there's our hose. We have not opened these yet. These are still sealed, so the gas is still inside the unit. It has not been let into the evaporator assembly with the tubing. We're gonna come over here and I'm just gonna turn this gas on. So I normally go to about 300 PSI. So I'm gonna let that fill all the way up and then we're gonna go get our leak detectant spray and spray all our fittings to make sure we have no leaks. So there it is guys. We got it to 200 PSI and I went ahead and shut the bottle off. So now I'm gonna let this sit there and make sure this doesn't move. And I'm gonna go ahead and spray our fittings to check for leaks. This step isn't 100% necessary. You can just go ahead and vacuum the system down and watch your vacuum gauge to make sure you don't have any leaks. So this is just extra assurance because you don't want this to leak. Otherwise you have to get the whole system evacuated and recharged. Don't waste all your refrigerator. You don't have to deal with that. The main reason I even have this is because I do welding, but I got the regulator and everything off on Amazon. I also have a cheap vacuum pump I got from Harbor Freight, I believe. This is a R410. A gauge set also from Amazon. This is a 134A gauge set that I actually originally used to vacuum my first system down and this worked just fine too because the fittings are correct but I did go ahead and scoop the correct one and then all you need is these fittings. So I'll leave links to all that down below in case you're needing to do this yourself. I know it can be quite confusing. That's why a lot of people will generally buy the Mr. Cool units because they have quick release fittings and pre-charge lines but if you're not afraid to get a little bit of DIY and do it yourself, try it yourself and you're willing to follow these steps, you can easily do it yourself and save a lot of money and not having to buy a Mr. Cool mini split, which costs significantly more money. All right, so we got our leak detectant spray. Take some of that. That's it, you just let this sit, and if there's any leaks, it'll form bubbles. So we're gonna let that sit for 15 minutes, and we're gonna come check for bubbles. Same thing on the inside, we wetted the fittings down, and as you can see, there's no continuous formation of bubbles. There are some bubbles that are gonna form from spraying it, but as long as you don't see a continuous stream, that generally means it's sealed. Same for the big one, same thing, no continuous bubbles. And you wanna spray right there, and then on the backside right here between where it connects. Same with that, same on the backside. So gonna let that sit for 15 minutes. Let's go see if the pressure's moved at all. All right, we're gonna let this sit for 15 minutes. While I'm waiting for the pressure test to complete, I'm gonna go ahead and install the wiring. All right, next we're gonna move on to the wiring. So first you take this little cover off. You have to pop out two bungs. Now you wanna run your both your lines through that. If you want to make this look a lot cleaner and nicer, I'd recommend you get the proper bungs and conduit. I'm gonna go ahead and add that later, but I had to order them on Amazon. So just to get this video finished and the unit running just for now, I'm gonna do it like this. Don't do as I do, do it the correct way. And if you don't know how to do it, call an electrician so you don't mess up anything or burn yourself or your house or everything in between. All right, for demonstration purposes only, your green is gonna go over there. Your neutral is your white and your live is your black. You need to put connector ends on this. Once again, I had to order those. So just for demonstration's sake, I am gonna go ahead and hook this up and I'm gonna go back later and do it the correct way. So that's how you wire it like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this. This is a 120 volt unit, by the way, or 115 volts, as you can see. So if you're running a 230 volt unit, it may be a little bit different because you're gonna have your two phases going in instead of a line and a neutral. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these installed. And just like that. Also, I'm not putting in the disconnect switch right away. Like I said, I'm really just doing this for demonstration purposes only otherwise this video would be three hours long i am going to go back later and install it separately so if you guys want to see that exact process let me know in the comments and i'd be happy to make a separate video on installing it and making it look all nice with conduit and all that good stuff just to make it more proper and within code because this is definitely not going to be up to code like i said though this is just for demonstration just to get the unit running and to show you guys how easy it is to actually do it make sure you check with your walls if you're not comfortable doing this get an electrician to help you guys out and you don't have to fiddle with none of this all right next the control wire i don't mean to keep reiterating that i just don't want no one to get hurt and then you guys believe me so we're gonna go ahead and hook these up. I'm gonna have to reference the picture I took and then the ground is gonna go right there. So I'm gonna put the ground right there. I'm gonna reference the picture for one, two, and three and get those hooked up now. And then these are the type of spades you need to buy to crimp on your electrical connectors in order for them to fit in this perfectly. So I am gonna go back and add those later once I get them in the mail. All right, so this is what we're left with and that's really all there is to it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the anti-fatigue thing on there that goes there to help hold these in. And then we're going to put the cover box back on and then the wiring is 100% complete. All you got to do is give this thing 120 volts and it will work. All right, guys, it's been 15 minutes. We've had no leaks. Pressure's sitting right at 200. So we're good there. And same there. That all looks good. What? She just wants to go outside. But if she gets outside, she doesn't like to come in. All right, I'm going to call the pressure test a success. Now we're going to connect the gauge set and the vacuum pump and we're going to pull the evaporator and line set down. So I'm going to show you how to make all those connections. Start the evacuation. All right, guys, step one, take your low side hose from your manifold vacuum gauge set and screw it into the adapter. You have to buy this adapter in order to connect to your mini split. The good news is it's all the same. So you buy one set, you can do as many of these as you want. So snug that guy up over here. Make sure it's snugged up on your manifold. Next, take your yellow hose, connect it to your vacuum pump, just like so. Now you can kick the vacuum pump on. Make sure your high side is shut. Yep, nice and tight. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. 
and you hear the vacuum pump change, that's because it's pulling all the air out of the system. That's it. So I'm going to let this run probably about 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes. I think the instructions call for 15, but I'm going to do 20 just to really make sure it's evacuated. I'm gonna back up so y'all can see the whole thing. So we're going to click line to the adapter on the mini split to the service port on the mini split. Yellow line to the vacuum pump, turn the vacuum pump on, open your low side, make sure your high side shut, and that's it. Let that run for 15 to 20 minutes. And once again, you do this step after you're sure your system is pressure tight, whether you're pressure tested or not, or if you're confident enough to just go ahead and vacuum it, you can do that. Once we get down to desired suction amount, I'm then gonna shut the vacuum pump off and let this thing sit just to make sure the vacuum doesn't drop. And if we're all good there, then we can disconnect everything and release the gas. And there is a specific way to do that because there's a Schrader valve in there and we don't wanna pull that off and let air go in. So I will show you how to do that. All right, so that's about 30, about 20 minutes of vacuuming. We got it down to almost negative 30, but that seems to be the farthest my vacuum pump will pull it. So now I'm gonna let this thing sit, make sure that doesn't move. And if it doesn't move, we are good to release the refrigerant. I've already got my two caps removed here. And all you do is stick an Allen wrench in there and there and untwist that. And as soon as you do that, the refrigerant will flow into the lines and that's it, you are done. If you ever, for some reason, have a leak in the system and you have to ever recharge it, you will have to completely evacuate the system and add, in this case, 40 ounces of R410A. So keep that in mind, but that's it. This is pretty much the scariest part of the install. And I think this is what scares most people, but I promise you guys, as long as you just take your time and you know, pay attention to what you're doing, I think you guys can get it done. I have faith in you guys. All right, so our vacuum is holding true. So now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack this a little bit because if you have a full vacuum in this and you go to remove this, if the Schrader's pushed in, it's gonna suck a little bit of air in. So I'm just gonna crack this a little bit, just to get a little bit of positive pressure so I can't suck. And then all you gotta do is pull this off, boom. And that's it, we're done. Put your service caps back on that. You open this up and let the gas in. Caps back on. Boom, guys, that's it. We are completely done. So I'm gonna go inside and turn it on and see if it works. All right, here we go. Ooh, we're on cool. That's a 72. Let's just let it do its thing. Is that a second to cool off? Let's go outside and see if the outside unit kicked on. Oh, yes, she is running. Ooh, it's starting to get cold. Look at that, guys. 40 degrees, 39 degrees. This thing is ice cold. All right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap this video up right here. I have a lot of cleaning up to do, so I'm going to do all the finishing work off camera. And then once I get this thing finalized, as well as getting all this finalized and cleaned up, I actually have a ton of cleaning to do in the whole house. So I have a lot of work ahead of me. But once this is all cleaned up and I'm satisfied with the product, I'm satisfied with how that came up, I'm going to do a follow-up video and we're going to kind of go from there. So if you guys got anything out of this video, please let me know. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if y'all have questions or need help installing your own mini splits. I will do my best to assist. And with that being said, I guess have a good day and I will see you all in the next video. Heck yeah. Working really well.